Now, Lisa, we spoke about it earlier. How many times do we hear the term footstool? And uh, we have to dig into it. Now, this morning, we have the professional and the associate at STBB Procureurs, Corleen Mostert, on the line. Corleen, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. Thanks for you, Don. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. It's lovely to chat to you this morning. Corleen, well, let's kick it off. First of all, what does footstool mean? The footsteps clause is a common law principle and literally means with the shove of a foot, Mm -hmm. as strange as that sounds. So generally, it describes when you buy something as it is, with Mm -hmm. all its faults, in the condition that it is at the moment of the sale. So the clause Mm -hmm. is also viewed as a way for sellers to protect themselves. Okay. All right. Okay, so what is the purpose of the footstool clause? It um, usually states that uh, the seller shall not be liable for latent defects in the property and that the purchaser buys the property as it is. Mm. So it protects your seller okay, from so, an automatic mm, yeah. warranty against latent defects. Oh, sorry, Colleen, for interrupting you there. I'm just so excited no, about this. Because no. the thing is, I just want to find out, well, first of all, the buyer must be very vigilant and really look for all the mistakes and faults and whatever. You, you have to really be up your game uh, when you buy something foots to it. Now, looking towards the seller's side, what type of protection does a foots to its clause provide to the seller? Um, it, it usually provides um, protection for mm. the seller insofar as um, that, that, that it's latent defect mm. and insofar as the seller was honest about the defects in the property. Ah, Okay. Mm. Okay, let's mm. talk about those latent defects. What does that mean? Um, it's usually a material defect mm-hmm. which was not visible upon a reasonable inspection of the property. So the material imperfection must have existed when the parties entered into the contract. Mm-hmm. So it mm. will only be identifiable usually by an expert. Okay, so how does latent defects differ from your patent defects? So that's the two. We have the latent and we've got the patent defects that we have. Yeah, patent defects is um, clearly visible to the naked eye. And Mm -hmm. then we're thinking of things like cracked gutters or tiles, dripping taps, things that the purchaser would see upon a reasonable inspection of Mm -hmm. the property. Whereas your latent defects would be something that's not clearly visible to the ordinary man. Okay. Even if it's, it, it's sometime, sometimes apparent to an expert. So then we're thinking of things like a leaking pool or a leaking roof. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because it's not raining the day that you go and visit the house or yes. go and view the house. But then first rain comes and it's wet all over. Yeah, I'm just thinking of bugs in the wall. That mm. is latent. <laughs> yeah. Bugs in the wall because you can't see it, but an expert <laughs> comes and finds it. Okay, so what does the purchase approve in order for the seller to be held liable for the defects? Your purchaser must be able to prove that the thing that was sold had the defect at the time of the sale. Okay. That the seller then knew of that defect and did not disclose it, and that the seller deliberately concealed the defect. Mm. Sure. You see, that, and that's a very heavy burden of proof in that the sense is. that, yeah, you, yeah, in and the sense that you have to. To, to prove that he knew and he fraudulently mm-hmm. did not disclose. Sure. So you must prove your innocence then against that. Um, yes. your, okay. How was how has the enactment, and, oh, enactment of the CPA affected the footstool clause? If we have to let's quickly discuss that side as well. Um, yes, the Consumer Protection Act mm-hmm. came into effect on the first of April, twenty eleven. And it states that buyers are entitled to receive goods that are of a good quality, so Mm -hmm. reasonably suitable for the purposes Mm -hmm. for which they are generally intended, defect-free, durable, and safe. Okay. So the goods that you are buying must be of good quality. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, does the Consumer Protection Act apply to all property transactions? The CPA only applies to an agreement concluded between a consumer and a supplier in the ordinary course of their business. So, usually private sales between individuals will fall outside the ambit of the Consumer okay. Protection Act. We're chatting to Corlene Mostert, associate there at, at STBB Attorneys this morning, and we're talking about food stewards. And uh, we just spoke about the Consumer Protection Act. That's also part of uh, property transactions. Um, and now I want to quickly find out, Corlene, in which instances are the food stewards clauses impermissible? When your National Credit Act specifically applies, mm -hmm. there are exemption clauses that relate to any guarantee or warranty that would, in the absence of such a provision, be implied in a credit agreement. Mm -hmm. So items sold on credit may not be sold to it, okay. as the parties may not exclude the, the, the seller's implied warranty against these latent defects. Wow. Okay. All right mm. then. How does if we if we now look at the CPA? How does the CPA, if applicable, limit the operations of the food stewards clause? Um, the the CPA specifically provides for a statutory duty of disclosure. So suppliers cannot exclude liability for defects by way of a food stewards clause in their sale agreement. So the Act basically expands the common law obligation to disclose latent defects by requiring suppliers to disclose the material defects mm. and to correct any misapprehensions on the part of the consumer. I must tell you, Colleen, uh, when I, uh, beforehand, uh, before the interview, food stewards was such an easy um, way of selling something. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like, there it goes, it's food stewards, I don't have to care about it. But now listening to you, this is much bigger and much more in detail. Um, so bringing in the Consumer Protection Act as well. So does the Consumer Protection Act mean the end of food stewards clause? No, is no, it, it doesn't. Yeah, the, the CPA will only apply to transactions falling within the ambit of the Act. So, therefore, the food stewards clause can still be included into agreements entered into between private individuals. So, you won't be... Um, the, the Consumer Protection Act will apply in, in certain instances and not mean the end of the food stewards clause. Fantastic. But if we have any questions, if you yeah. sold something uh, food stewards or you bought something food stewards and now you're sitting with it, you can't use it. There's just no, well, you paid this massive amount. Maybe this it is property um, and you're sitting now. You've got all of these problems and you need an expert. What you do is you contact STB, STBB attorneys. They're in part of Flyer in Somerset West. The contact number 021-850-6400. And you can ask to speak to Corlene Mostert and one of their associates as well. But Corlene, thanks a lot for chatting to us this morning and just enlightening us in regards to food stewards. And uh, now, next time, we know. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. And please do give a call if you, we can help. For sure. Thanks, Corlene. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Yes, bye. Bye. was met trots aangebied door STBB procureur. So vooraanstaande rechtsadvies teen bekostigbare tarieven. Skakel hulle op 021-850-6400. Jy moet net onthou dat Radio Helderberg of STBB procureurs nie aanspreeklik gehou kan word vir enige skade gelei wat voortspreid uit advies gegee in hierdie rechtskoloom program nie. Elke saak moet op sy eie merite hanteer word. Te hanteer.